Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome to Smirk. Every other week, one of our hosts introduces an original story, which we then use as a springboard for a spirited and lighthearted discussion of whatever the moral or theme of their story is. This week, it's Amanda's turn. Mm. What are we going to... What are we? Is it going to be heartfelt? Is it going to mm. be psychology? Is it going to be... There is a little bit of murder. Oh, man, that's like three death stories in a row then. Yeah. Season four, the season of death. Just kidding. Ooh, there's no murder. No. I just want to get you excited. Oh, no, I'm bummed. I was really getting excited for this. It's yeah, a romancy was... story. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's funny. I went from six to midnight to six, and I'm back at midnight. <laughs> I literally <laughs> fell off the clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we ready for my story? I guess. Yeah, we're just getting right to it, huh? Yeah, yeah. My All voice right. is like, it's got to stay with me just a little longer. All right. All right, settle in. It's time for my story. (music) Jessica and Steve have been together for a few years now and live together. They're a pretty simple and laid back couple, which some may say constitutes a more than underwhelming sex life. Steve has always had this erotic fantasy of Jessica being a stripper with a heart of gold, And although Jessica doesn't typically like to role play, she likes to make Steve happy. She's on her way back from the airport in a cab when the idea pops into her head. She's going to do it. She calls her best friend as she starts to get undressed in the cab, covered only in a long pea coat, telling her the idea. Her friend is a bit concerned. It's just not who Jessica is. The two get off the phone in a hurry as the cab pulls up to Jessica's house. Gotta run. I'm home, Jessica says. Anxious, nervous, but eager to appease, Jessica walks in the front door. Hello, I'm home, she exclaims while tossing her bags to the ground and doing her best sexy dance into the living room. Steve comes out of the bedroom dumbfounded. What are you doing home so soon? He asks Jessica as she twirls in the living room, kicking off her shoes and undoing the belt around the waist of her coat. As she makes her final twirl around, dropping her coat to the ground and opening her eyes to look at Steve, out comes a red-headed woman who can only be described as reminiscent of real-life Ariel. Jessica's jaw drops, and as she walks to the kitchen, Steve and the Ariel look-alike pull together their clothes, stumbling. Jessica comes back out screaming and takes the meat tenderizer across the girl's temple and then to the back of her head blood spewing across all of the walls as her hand retracts for another jab. Steve is terrified and tries to yell at Jessica to stop, which only makes things worse, as Jessica swings her arm like a pendulum under his chin, slicing skin off of his neck as the tenderizer glides forward. She continues to pummel Steve before pressing into his eye sockets. Within minutes, Jessica hears the sirens, likely from the neighbors who must have heard the screaming and called police. The police bust in the door with their guns drawn, announcing themselves and anticipating a more resistant assailant. Instead, they find Jessica sitting on the floor next to the two bodies. The male missing his eyes, and the female whose face is hardly recognizable, and a Y incision in the chest. Jessica's voice perks up as the police look at her and move in to detain, with an object dropping from her hand. As blood drips from her hand and the woman's heart lay on the floor in front of her, Jessica stares at the first-line officer and says in a blood-curdling tone, He always wanted a woman with a heart of gold, but I guess hers was better. You know, there's nothing I hate more than when people just drop by unexpectedly. (laughs) To their own home. Call first, man. It's just the polite thing to do. Yes. Yeah, send a text that you got off work early. There's no need for surprises here. She looked like Ariel, huh? Yeah. Man, that's that's a, that's a loss. <laughs> so so what do you guys think the moral is? Don't get caught. <laughs> wow, geez. <laughs> I mean, that's that's definitely one. 
<laughs> oh, I admire him. Oh, that was beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna have a fling, don't do it in in your own apartment. That's or in your own home. That seems stupid. Be careful what you ask for. Ah, now that one is very close. Um, let's see. Uh, let's try to. As I'm sure we have women listeners. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> women, uh, women are queens. Treat women with more respect than men. Ariel had it coming. <laughs> Steve had it coming. They always have it coming. So women's suffrage is good. Kamala for president. <laughs> oh, my I'm God. Just about covered the bases. Uh, actions have consequences. Oh, those are pretty extreme consequences. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. I hey, would argue that Steve almost dodged, he almost dodged a bullet by going off with Ariel. <laughs> yeah, if he didn't get caught, it would have been good. Because this shit is crazy. Well, <laughs> let me ask you guys. She is a nut. Is she still in the pea coat? That's a very important. <laughs> she, dropped, still... <laughs> she dropped the pea coat. She was naked. She oh, was yeah. exposed. The cops got a free naked. show. <laughs> and the cops seem very calm about it. So I'm thinking Ariel must have been far more attractive. Just... <laughs> well, I mean, her face probably isn't too great at this point. Not anymore. But... They're all just looking at her like very disappointed. Like, what a waste. So let me ask you this, because there are there's kind of this notion with an affair that usually mm. the mistress takes the brunt of the anger. You know, you have the <laughs> well, woman who's in, <laughs> in the relationship and they get more mad at the person who was kind of the outsider. You know, what is the term? Um, oh, my God, you're you're what is the word that they must the house? No, they're they. Homewrecker. They're a homewrecker. Homewrecker. This is the this bitch hit her with a fucking freaking whatever it was. What was it? A a, a meat tenderizer. Tenderizer. She's a homewrecker. She wrecked that whole house. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you guys seriously. What do you think about that concept? Because in a lot of cases, I shouldn't say always, but in a lot of cases. The the we'll say in this scenario, Steve isn't going to take the brunt of the action. He's not going to be the one faced with most of the anger and emotions. It's always bitterness towards the other woman or maybe mm. even the other man. Sounds like you Steve know, guys took, may just took go two and, holes in the head is what it sounds right, like. <laughs> may go and punch the other guy that was, you know, sleeping with their woman as an extremist response to it. But what do you think of that? Who deserves most of the anger? Well, sir, I... The, your 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 partner deserves most of the anger, especially you don't know if the the side the side hoe <laughs> they might not even know the situation, you know. So it's really not fair to them. I think it's just a case of it's so much easier to you know attack something other. You know what I mean? Like it's just easier to in the moment put the blame on the on the other person, right? Because presumably you love the person who's cheating on you, so you're probably, you know, you're, it's a lot of emotions happening all at once there. So you go and you take the meat tenderizer to Ariel's head. <laughs> As you do. Uh, no, you don't. It's the natural inclination of mankind to want to lay the blame at someone else's feet. But why not at the person who you do care about? Because people that, are, that people over. don't, it's the old, um... <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever saw the old Eddie Murphy stand up, but he used to tell a stand up joke a long, long time ago, and he was very funny. Where he would say that if man's in a relationship and he has an affair, all he has to do is say, is deny it, and eventually a woman will believe him. And his argument was, you know, I, I just caught you, you were butt naked. Wasn't me. I just saw you just run out of that room with her. Are you, she's there. It was you. Wasn't me. And if you say it enough times, eventually she's going to say, maybe it wasn't you. And I think that's the wow. The, that's a lot of terrible manipulation and it, and yes. brainwashing. And happening. it works. It works both ways. But I think it probably works that way more than it does the other way. And it's just playing off emotions. It's just because women are more emotionally invested, typically, in a relationship than than men, and they immediately want to blame the other woman. Where I think guys typically, at least in my experience, I'm just based it on my experience, typically blame the mate. I don't know. They're pretty. They're pretty fist heavy. Once they hear you were sleeping with their lady, like pow, Man. pow, pow. I, I've never well, gotten mad at the other this. at the other dude when it's happened to me. I just I just get mad at the mate. I mean, that's me. I'm just looking at it myself. I guess. Fair enough. Caught us in the shower. Wasn't me. <laughs> Banging on the sofa. Wasn't me. So let me ask you guys: What would you do if you came home 
to your significant other cheating on you. In my house? In your house. In, in your my bed. bed. I cannot yes. disclose this information on the podcast for possible future litigation. <laughs> <laughs> this is all hypothetical. Nothing you would ever really do. Uh, my house in my bed, that is taking it to an extreme mm-hmm. level of stank. So you got to move out. <laughs> okay. So how do you how are you reacting in the initial moment you come home and you catch your person? In either in the act or grabbing their clothes from the act. I am not like your typical per I don't just have that jealous rage in me. I would probably laugh and say, all right, well, have at it, and then leave. <laughs> That's probably what I would do. I'm honestly just not, I'm not going to sit there and fight with, all right, man, you won. You know what? You also get the bills. Have fun. And then I walk out. Yeah, as much fun as it would be to recreate the third verse of Guilty Conscience by Eminem and Dr. Dre. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well played. It, it, uh, in actual reality, I assume I would probably see them. I would feel like anger rising through me, but I uh, hope I could collect it because uh, I've worked on collecting anger a lot through my life. Uh, and I would probably, you know what? I would probably just start packing my PS4 right then and there because it's obviously the most important thing in the house <laughs> to me now. <laughs> Screw the animals. Get the PS4. We got to go. I don't I know what's prioritize. Yeah, I would I would honestly I'd probably just start packing right then and there. Cause so I'm not gonna leave my stuff there. Cause I don't want Oh wanna... no, you don't do that. You don't oh, yeah, I... he might rub his naked ass exactly. all over it. Just like oh <laughs> He's take, rubbed him all over the sheets. Take already. his controller and he's like, I wonder if I could play it with my balls. <laughs> That's quite a visual. But I was just saying more for my to protect myself because it's all too easy to say Oh, well, my PS4 is still over there, you know, so I still have to talk to them, oh, yeah. et cetera. You're like, oh, I still got to go over there one last time. And then all of a sudden they're pleading for forgiveness and et cetera. And, you know, maybe they bought you beef roux and you're like, well, now I have to be with this person. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're so easy to win over. <laughs> so I got I to gotta get myself then there. Some cheese fries and you're like, oh, I forgive you. Oh, you got, got the you- large. And the wild west beef, the beef and cheese. You know what I'm talking about. You got to get that good stuff going. <laughs> and I'm all yours. Jeez, that's easy. Yeah, I uh, I don't know that I mm, I've in my historically I've never been so calm as the two of you. And although I've worked on myself and I'm a calmer person these days, I don't think I'd be that calm. But I would definitely be calling two men in a truck over to get my shit out today. Is that a Charlie Sheen sitcom? <laughs> I really thought it was like. Some kind of sex thing for a minute. <laughs> no, no. It's, they it's just like come two, there and they do all the packing for you. And they two put girls, it on the, one cup. Oh it's God. two guys, one I can, truck. I come home, my man's cheating on me, so I'm calling two men. <laughs> and we're doing it in the truck. Yeah, yeah he's you watching. get your own show. I'm going to Mia Khalifa this. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I know a porn star by name. Don't judge. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Okay, so my last question for you guys. Oh, we're already at the end. That's sad. I, I really thought this was going to go on for a while. Let's talk about poor Steve and his eye sockets. <laughs> <laughs> or lack thereof. Yeah. What's your last question? Sorry. Oh, it's okay. I was going to ask you about, and this is a only hypothetical. Mm, those are always fun. Mm. Especially if your wife listens. If <laughs> you did murder someone... Let's say in self-defense, what well, is that, the first and best? Planned. <laughs> <laughs> what is the first and best household object you'd use? Wow. Get creative. A PlayStation Four controller <laughs> <laughs> that you could st- you could smell the stanky balls <laughs> off of. <laughs> exactly. Shove it up the rectum. Whoa! No, that <laughs> that didn't occur to me. That sounds very. Have you seen those controllers? That would take some science. Uh, I don't know. I guess it. What a, what a question! What a weird question <laughs> that can be used against you in court. No, I said this is completely hypothetical. Just give me like the the weirdest, most peculiar, or best household. I'm gonna object. grab my big screen TV and bash your skulls in until the glass breaks off the front. Mm. And then I'll take the glass because I have killed the first person, <laughs> and now I'm dragging the glass across the second person's throat. Wow. Wow. You're going to mess up your TV for them? It's prime. It's prime day, baby. (laughs) (laughs) 
describe things? So over. what object, the household object, would I use for self-defense or <laughs> argue that I used self-defense to kill this dude? <laughs> Hypothetically, That was, that yes. was banging the wife. Well, so you know, I keep a I keep a knife mold in my freezer, so just so I keep the ice <laughs> sharp. Right. Other than the actual, you know, gun in the house. Let's skip that one. Let's just go to something no, else. No, yeah, something different. Okay, so here's what I would do. I would say, hey, Hank, because you know his name's Hank or some shitty name like that. And you would, hey, <laughs> okay, Hank. that feels very specific. Let's go out to the deck and let's talk about what you've been doing on my deck. And then he comes out and then I would turn on the fire pit. And hold him over it. Oh, there you go. Okay. And then say he fell repeatedly. <laughs> he fell into the fire that I lit. <laughs> exactly. I was having a nice fire, heard him banging the wife, asked him to come outside. He fell onto the fire pit. You know, under Sorry. a nice guy pretense. Hey, man, it's cool. I just want to talk to you. No big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab a 1,200 page fantasy novel. I'm going to paper cut their throat one page at a time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hey, that would hurt. Until that I get sounds through like the a trachea. Great movie. <laughs> Zach kind of brought it up, though, already earlier when he talked about Beef Roo being really all it takes to bring him back. But is there anything that could bring you wait, wait, back? Hold on. If... Wait, how you, uh, you just got us on the witness stand. How are you going to murder somebody? <laughs> oh, I, I gave you the description in the story. You oh, that's right that's your solution. I'm oh, yeah. right is this story true, man? <laughs> Well, I obviously can't say that, but, oh you know, God. bail has been. Wait, has wait, been wait, wait, wait. So if this is your uh, visual reenaction of what you come home and your man's, ta you know, playing. If I'm going to be crazy, crazy. Yes. Playing it in the bedroom. I mean, it was a redhead. What's he supposed to do? Say no. <laughs> that looks like Ariel. Honestly, I, mean, I would I say blame him. give him that one. I would say. I, mean, I would probably say, where yeah. was my invitation? That was rude. Right. All you had to do was invite me. We would have had this all cleared up. Exactly. Maybe that's how Steve really, he should have played it. He'd just be like, oh, no, I was, just, I was hoping you'd I show up in his peacoat. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what I got us? Got a redhead. I just warm her up for you, babe. And if she gives oh you any gosh. side eye, you just be like, you go, see that meat tenderizer? Mm-hmm. Ain't worth it. <laughs> but no, I was going to ask you guys, is there anything that could bring you back from an experience like this where you would give forgiveness? Oh, Wait, sure. Is my scar my skull fragments on the floor? <laughs> not from the... Well, I mean, do you mean from the murder or the... No, not from the murder, from the cheating. Because it's kind of hard to come back you from haven't, You haven't murdered anybody yet. If I'm laying so on the floor there... and I can't see anymore, I'm, I'm suddenly daredevil because of this chick. I don't want anything to do with her anymore. No, it's before any murder has happened and you're the person who walked into the house. Uh, you never say never. That's what I say. You never say never mm -hmm. because who's who's perfect? Nobody's perfect in a relationship. Nobody's right. perfect. So. As, a, as a younger man, I would have said hell no. As a ancient human being now. Ancient? Yeah. I would say that I, f I think I could probably eventually forgive the person. Probably, you know, it's going to benefit me, too, to let that shit go. And I would, but I don't think I could be with the person. You know, I could understand that, like, all oh, the very mature response. Maybe there's something failing in our relationship. You know, maybe I'll let you down some way, et cetera. But I don't think it could... I, we couldn't repair it. Oh, God. I'm such a practical guy. I literally would look at, well, it's going to be kind of a headache. And the expenses are the, here. It's expensive to get divorced. And honestly, I'm too old and tired to care anymore. So you just do what you got to do. I don't even care. Honestly, I, I'm probably so practical. I would probably get to that point and just be like, I guess that means I get to have a girlfriend and she's going to look like Ariel. <laughs> there you go. Here, here's something I, I, I've been thinking of during COVID. How many second families have been ruined? Oh, my. <laughs> that's that's really dark and twisted, but it's very true. <laughs> a lot of FaceTime phone sex yeah. or whatever. I mean, yeah, you can't you can't use the excuse of I got to go away on business anymore. <laughs> Shit. That's a really good point. I thought your company blocked flying. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, I drove, man. That's why I was gone so long. And the mistress is like, I thought you loved me. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, that's... I don't baby, know. baby, how long did it take you to get them groceries again? It was like four <laughs> hours and you got $86 for it. Just <laughs> use shipped, god damn it. Oh, man. That's a great point. Thank you. <laughs> Second families have been destroyed because of COVID. Damn you, COVID. You're ruining all the... Everybody's gig is up, man. It's not cool. 
Uh, you know you've so. triggered several people with this episode. I hope you're happy about that. Because they, <laughs> they went through this exact experience. Yeah. Without uh, the, minus, the exact same murder. Mine is yeah. the murder portion. But they probably so wanted to. Do you think my story is true or fiction, Wait, hold though? on. Man, you got to answer your own questions here. What? Could you forgive the person? Oh. Unless I... the story is truth and you use a meat tenderizer, in which case <laughs> I know the answer. True. True indeed. Um, You can definitely, I think I could forgive somebody in time to move on. But I think I'm in the same boat that you are, Zach, where it's, mm, that's irreparable. Like, you did the damage. My brain isn't going to forget the damage. So it is what it is. Ah, uh, people get tired. Mm, not I me. Mean, I hold grudges, but I I would let it go. More power to the people who can, like let it go. But it is just like the trust is never going to be there again, ever. I think you can you could rebuild it, but man, it takes so much work. What stage in my life is this happening at? Because if I'm old and like decrepit, maybe. Maybe Aaron's point holds where you're just too tired to worry about it. <laughs> I think but you I'm... just have enough bad relationships where you just your your give up bleep level is so high <laughs> that you literally just don't have any left to give. I'm like, ah, it is what it is. I don't even care anymore. I, it's much more of a hassle <laughs> to uh, to not deal with it. True, true. So is my story truth or fiction? Did somebody really die by a meat tenderizer? I say truth. Yeah, I'm also going to say truth. Wow, you're very wrong. I created this in my brain. That concerns me more. <laughs> <laughs> that concerns me more. Because you happen to have a mate, and all I keep thinking is that poor guy, should he ever have a, fr- a red-headed friend over? <laughs> and they're just playing, they happen to be playing some Monopoly in the other room or something, and they come out and like, oh, and then you're there in your peacoat, meat tenderizer. That's all I can think about. You know what I got to say? If I come out and my man is playing monopoly with someone else and i was not invited i'm pissed i want to play monopoly you know what let's start with the term my man okay there's a problem with today's relationship <laughs> possessive there is no ownership in a relationship which is probably why i am i see things the way i see them because i'm just like i don't own you you don't own me that's just how i live my life well i don't own him i'm just saying like you refer to him as my no, man i've met Vinny. you own him no i don't <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny though, because it's true. Ooh, dead air. Well, hear... you guys are supposed to ask me the title of my story now. We're we're too afraid of you to honestly oh, discuss whatever. anything further. Um, what is the title of your story? I'm sure it's like this is what happens when you wrong women. No, no. You I say move coming? on, find you a new man. Great A meat. That's the name. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name? That of it? was clever. Heart of Gold. All right, because he wanted a stripper with a heart of gold. He wanted, yeah, he wanted a stripper who had a heart of gold, and that was the whole thing of why she took the the mistress's heart out of her chest and was you know holding what? it at the end. I want to think. I want to think Umbridge with Steve because you know I think every stripper has a heart of gold. <laughs> oh, and they're all going That's through sweet. college, right? Hey, look, they're they know where the money's they at. They make good money. Good for them. Good for them. And they got to work hard to look that good. <laughs> the Chris Rock thing. Ain't no stripper ever put away and put us up through college. <laughs> All uh, right. Well, I support sex workers. Aaron. If you're a dad, you have one job. Make sure your daughter don't work on the pole. Uh, I support them too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Financially. <laughs> He's keeping the economy booming. Yeah, I support a few. The, they had the best vote ad of anybody that ran an ad. What? Who, OnlyFans? No, there was some. There was a stripper, I think, in Georgia, I believe. But they actually had an ad where they wrote "vote" on their ass, and they were actually telling people to get out and vote. And they were shaking it like a Polaroid. Good picture. for them. It's a great ad. I paid more attention to that political ad than any other ad I've seen in the past couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was hungry. I don't know what that means, but I was. For that ass. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> I was hungry to vote. <laughs> oh, right, that. Exactly. Okay. Well, I think that's uncomfortable enough for everyone. And we all know Amanda's got some issues. No, I don't. I said I would never do this. I would just call and get my shit packed. I don't know, but you you seem to get triggered whenever that conversation ever comes up or the word adultery or affair comes up. You, you I get, don't like Argh! it. No, I've had a horrible history with it, but that doesn't mean that I would. I've reacted crazy in the past. I'm too old for that now. That's what everybody says before they take a meat tenderizer in somebody's <laughs> face. You know, as the show goes, we'll occasionally pick listener oh, wait, stories. Wait, 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 oh, wait. there's more. 
There's more. I meant to tell you guys, part of this story derived from the opening of the pilot episode from New Girl. Do you guys, did you ever watch New Girl? Zach, did you ever watch the pilot of New Girl? It's Jess. It's Jess. She's literally in the cab. Her boyfriend has had this fantasy of her being a stripper with a heart of gold. So she comes in, drops her coat, and he comes out and there's another woman there. She doesn't murder him, obviously. She leaves packs her stuff but i thought i would add murder to it murder so that actually came from new girl this is a this is a covid show that you picked up no i watched this while back okay but cool well that's a great that was a good anecdote yeah you're welcome yeah i never saw the show oh well maybe you should watch the pilot I'm good. As our show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss on Smirk. And if you'd like the chance to have yours read, and maybe we'll add some violence to it if a man is reading it, email it to my story at smirkpodcast.com. Join the conversation that Steve cannot partake in by joining our Facebook group <laughs> or follow us on Twitter at Smirk Podcast. And be sure to use the show's hashtag Smirk. He's definitely not reading the story. Don't. <laughs> Maybe it's in Braille. Don't miss an episode. Be sure to subscribe on your podcast app of choice and check out our website at smirkpodcast.com. R.I.P. Stephen Ariel. <laughs> and as you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk. Ariel didn't have it coming. I'm just letting you know, like, she did she not did. We don't that. even know. Like, she was probably innocent, realistically, because all she did was grab her clothes. Like, she probably didn't even know. You know the messed up part is that he brought a half fish on the land. So. <laughs>